Dr. Lejeune, could you I don't think that's could you please uh, describe the advent of the term preembryo and uh, what you see as a motivation of those mm -hmm. who support it and who you see as the major players in the debate? Uh, the word preembryo was invented, as far as I know, not more than six or uh, seven years ago. It's something like that, Martin. And it was invented so that you would have a step that people would not understand what it is. <coughs> because a preembryo cannot exist on pure logic for the very simple reason that before you have the embryo, you have the egg and the sperm separated. And when they got united, you got what is called an embryo. A one-cell embryo, a two-cell embryo, three cells, four cells, or number of cells that you wish. Now, at the moment that biology was made to describe nature, and not involving any decision about morality, because morality was accepted at that time, there was no discussion about calling something a preembryo. It was a one cell, a two cell, and number, any number of cell embryo. It's when they wanted to play with, with that tiny human that they decided to christen it a different way to de-Christianize it and saying it's not an embryo, it's a pre-embryo. Now, I would say that it is a dangerous thing because uh, for the people all like me, it makes us laughing because they try to change the dictionary. A dictionary will never change nature. Well, but they are teaching the children, and the children are reading the next dictionary, the most recent one, and progressively they will believe that there is something different at the beginning of life. But I will try tomorrow to show you what we can say safely today about the early embryo. Um, Dr. Lejeune, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, yes, oh, okay. Um, I was wondering if you could comment on what you've learned uh, about Alzheimer's disease by studying Down syndrome patients and um, as an example of uh, alternatives to fe fetal tissue research. Uh, fetal tissue research cannot help you at all on research on Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a progressive dementia which comes earlier what was called senile dementia. But for 60 years, the people are living a perfectly normal life. Depending on so the family, it can be 40 years. But let's say at least 40, 50 years, they have no trouble whatsoever. So you are not expecting to find a trouble in, in the embryo they were. Then it's a typical case in which research on very early life will not give you any hint about what is the mechanism of the disease. Now, what we have to understand is why suddenly those people decompensate. Now, we know that in Down syndrome, the babies who have three chromosome number 21 instead of two normally, in Down syndrome, the frequency of the Alzheimer's disease when they get around 40 years of age is much greater than in the general population and so much greater that it can be 20 or 40 times higher the frequency than in normal population. Then what is possible to study is, and we are doing that in my lab in Paris, is to try to figure out whether there is a progressive change typical of Down syndrome which exaggerate itself at the moment that they become uh, affected by the syndrome. And I can tell you, but it's just the actual stage of research, that there is a deficiency of one amino acid, which is called serine, which is typical on the blood of Down syndrome person after one year of age. And it's stabilized that way. And when they get grown up, 
sometimes it's, the deficit gets deeper and when they get Alzheimer, the deficit is much deeper than among all the others. So we have for the first time a possibility to understand what is happening. Now for the moment we are studying what is happening. If we understand it, maybe we will find a way to counteract it. For the moment I could not say that we can counteract it. But, just to add a word, it's pa I, I would guess that if we could really understand what is going on on Down syndrome person, then we would learn immediately how to help the normal person having the same disease. <coughs> then maybe it's easier to start with Down syndrome than to start with non-Down syndrome affected persons. <coughs> 